It's a warm, balmy night on the banks of the Hudson River. The trees are lush and the landscape is silhouetted against the glow of the cloudy night sky that glistens with the light from the full moon. The couple in front of us has pulled their small boat ashore as they heard the friendly and familiar chug of a steamboat moving upriver. But its sound is doubled as another ship comes into view, a sister of the boat that steams toward us. The bright spotlight atop the pilot house of the boat on the right sweeps across its starboard side, illuminating the newcomer. The couple on the shore looks on and the woman waves her handkerchief in a greeting as the piercing spotlight comes to rest on the ship at the left. The light glints off the large black letters on its side that proclaim its name. We stand here in the summer of 1909, welcoming Rensselaer, the newest member of the Hudson River Nightline, as it joins its twin sister Trojan in service. This is not your average ship portrait, but this was also not done by your average ship portraitist. About a year ago, we explored alternative ship portraiture as seen through Antonio Jacobson's depiction of the steamship Alamo in the Mallory Line logo. It was through this that we saw that even the most structured and repetitive ship portraitists have been known to break their own mold from time to time. It might be easy to group Samuel Ward Stanton into this group of artists if we only see his well-known meticulous pen and ink drawings of steam vessels, primarily those that traverse the Hudson River and its surrounding waters. It was these beautiful but static depictions of the beloved vessels that brought this young artist to fame. At the age of 23, Stanton displayed his works at the first Chicago World's Fair and his rise to prominence began. But again, this is just a fraction of Stanton's work, nothing like what we see in this inspired narrative painting. Stanton's life revolved around steamboats, literally. His father, Samuel Stanton, was a principal of Stanton Ward & Company, a shipbuilding company in Newburgh, New York, and young Stanton spent his days at the shipyard surrounded by these marvelous vessels. He doodled and sketched on anything he could get his hands on. He let his young imagination run wild as he dreamed of being a promoter for these very same ships, making up fantastic excursions and routes for guests from all over the world to embark on. He loved these boats, lived with them, and even lived on them when his family moved to Florida aboard a steamboat. Art and steam vessels, these were Stanton's loves. His life continuously revolved around a constant mixture of the two. Even his untimely death aboard RMS Titanic came as a result of art and steam vessels. It's because of this constant love of not only the visual arts, but also performance arts, like the poetry and music young Stanton studied and wrote, that his style takes on a more story-like, lyrical quality. We see this primarily as the artist moved more toward painting and mural work that graced the saloons of a number of steamboats. And it's easy to see why the Hudson River was an inspiration for music, poetry, and art for Stanton. People of all backgrounds have been using the Hudson River in New York for travel, leisure, and commerce for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Its verdant, forested hills that line the valley surrounding the river are so picturesque that they've become a wonder known around the world, and the river itself a destination to take in the scenery. But these boats didn't just run during the day. In fact, the night service ran boats up and down the Hudson between New York City and Troy or Albany. The boats of the Searchlight route were outfitted with 36-inch military-grade battleship searchlights, the largest manufactured that pierced through the darkness. They swept the shores, illuminating the surrounding headlands and providing a unique spectacle for passengers on board as well as any onlookers from the shore. In the spring of 1909, the Hudson Navigation Company introduced Trojan and then shortly after Rensselaer as the two newest members of the Citizens Line operating the searchlight route on the Hudson River Nightline. It's very likely that Stanton painted this work as a commemorative commission for the two new vessels that were themselves a spectacle. The 330-foot-long, steel-hulled, paddle-wheel beauties were decadently furnished in white, brass and rich reds, greens, warm wood, and over 1,200 electric lights further illuminating the darkness. A trip aboard Trojan or Rensselaer was surely an experience not soon forgotten. And Stanton has captured that stately excellence that we might expect of a commissioned portrait. But as we look at this work, it doesn't read as your average ship portrait. It's not just a broadside of a ship painted with technical accuracy, although it does include that. 
Instead, Stanton has woven these ships into their own narrative, into a story that he's invited the viewer into. We're there, a spectator on the shore, eager to see these phenomenal new vessels that are as beautiful inside as they are outside. We see that they're twins, and the artist has shown them not only from a bow and starboard view to give us more information about the vessels, but also in action, searchlight beaming, passing each other in the night. He's painted them as being a welcome and beloved presence on the river, the woman happily waving in the foreground. And they're dependable. The battleship's searchlights beam even more illuminating in the dark than the light of a full moon. Yes, painting a ship portrait at night might be a challenging task, but it wouldn't tell us anything about these steamboats, their route, or their purpose if Stanton had simply painted them in the day, perhaps in an unmarked body of water like so many other ship portraits of this time. Instead, by choosing to paint this work in the way he did, we're able to see Trojan and Rensselaer in a different light, under the light of the moon, as they would have been seen during their many years of service. Through his techniques, Stanton has not only presented us with information to learn something about the vessels, but he's also enticed us to want to step aboard these steam-powered marvels, just as millions have done through the years, to experience the love he felt for them, for ourselves.